Hello everyone. In this video, we will discuss about the classification of derivatives based on their underlying assets. The assets from which the derivative contract derives its value is called as an underlying asset. So the major classification of derivatives based on their underlying assets are as follows. Currency derivatives, commodity derivatives, equity derivatives, index derivatives and interest rate derivatives. Let's begin with currency derivatives. As many of you may know, Thirupur from Tamil Nadu, India is a major hub for exporting textiles and garments such as t-shirts and cotton wear to large international brands like Levis, H&M, Gap, etc. Now, let's assume a company called as Swadesh Limited has received an order from a prominent US brand to manufacture and deliver t-shirts worth 1 lakh US dollars. So the current USD to INR exchange rate is rupees 83 which means this order is valued at rupees 83 lakhs. It will take Swadesh Limited 3 months to complete the manufacturing and ship the goods and they will receive the payment of 1 lakh US dollars after this time. By that time, what if the rupee value appreciates and the exchange rate falls to rupees 75 per USD? When the company converts at 1 lakh US dollars into INR, they would receive only rupees 75 lakhs leading to a loss of rupees 8 lakhs. This exposure to exchange rate fluctuation is known as currency risk. Such kind of uncertainty in revenue would make it difficult for the company to plan their costs and profits effectively. Operating in such an unpredictable environment can be challenging. So to manage this risk, Swadesh Limited can enter into a forward contract with a bank. This contract allows them to lock the exchange rate today for converting 1 lakh US dollars into Indian rupee after 3 months. Suppose the bank offers a rate of rupees 80 per USD. Regardless of the exchange rate in the market after 3 months, Swadesh Limited will be able to convert 1 lakh US dollars at rupees 80 per USD, securing rupees 80 lakhs. By doing this, the company locks in its exchange rate and ensures stable revenue, allowing it to plan major expenses and margins with certainty. So, now do you wonder why is a forward agreement called as a derivative contract? The reason is that the forward contract derives its value from the price of the underlying asset. In this example, the underlying asset is the currency. So the forward price of rupees 80 in our example is derived from the prevailing exchange rate of the currencies in the market. So based on the underlying asset, derivatives can be named differently. I hope this makes sense now. Now let's move on to the commodity derivatives. Commodity derivatives are financial contracts that derive their value from the price of a physical commodity. Imagine an Indian airline company like Indigo wants to manage the risk of rising fuel prices. Fuel which comes from crude oil makes up about 40 to 50 percent of the airline's operating cost. So changes in oil prices can have a huge impact on the company's profits. Let us say crude oil is currently trading at Rs. 6000 per barrel. The Indigo Airlines is worried that in six months oil prices might increase due to several factors such as reduced global supply and production cut by major oil producing countries. If prices rise to 7,000 per barrel, their fuel costs will go up, which in turn would affect their profits. To avoid this risk, Indigo can use a crude oil derivative contract. They can enter into a contract with a trader today, saying that irrespective of the market price of crude oil after 6 months, Indigo would buy it at a fixed price, say, at Rs. 6,200 per barrel. Later, after 6 months, if crude oil rises to 7,000 per barrel, Without the derivative contract, Indigo would pay 7,000 per barrel, increasing their cost. But since they locked in the price at Rs. 6,200, they saved 800 rupees per barrel through the derivative agreement. But what if the crude oil prices drop to 5,500 per barrel in 6 months? Indigo still has to pay 6,200 due to the future contract. So they would end up paying 700 more than the market price. Thus, by using commodity derivatives like futures, the airline's company reduces the risk of unexpected rise in fuel prices even though they might miss out on savings if price drops. I hope this is clear. Now, let's move on to equity derivatives. Suppose an investor owns 100 shares of Reliance Industries which is currently trading at Rs. 2,500 per share. So the total value of their shares is 2,50,000 rupees which is 2,500 into 100. 
So the investor is worried that the price of Reliance might drop over the next three months due to market volatility. So to protect himself from this risk, he can enter into a future contract with another trader to sell the shares after three months at Rs. 2550 per share, irrespective of the share price three months later. If Reliance drops to 2200 after three months, the investor will be able to sell the shares for Rs. 2550. But if Reliance share price rises to 2700, he would miss out on some of the profits because he had locked in the selling price at 2550. So in this case, the investor might lose the extra profit, but he's still protected from the downside risk. There are other derivative instruments such as put options, which allow individuals to limit their losses in case of price decline. We will explore the various types of options in detail in the upcoming videos. Now let us move on to index derivatives. In the case of index derivatives, the value of the contract is derived from an underlying broad market index such as the Nifty 50. For example, let's consider a fund manager overseeing a portfolio worth Rs 500 crores, which is invested in various large cap stocks. If the fund manager anticipates a short term market downturn, instead of selling all the stocks, he can enter into a derivative contract by selling Nifty futures or by buying Nifty index put options. So even if the stock prices fall, the losses incurred will be compensated by profits made in the Nifty futures or put option. To determine how many units of Nifty futures to sell in order to have a perfect hedge, we need to know the beta of the portfolio. We will cover these calculations using real market data in upcoming videos. Finally, let us move on to interest rate derivatives. Interest rate derivatives are financial contracts that help manage or protect against changes in interest rates. Let's say a company is planning to take out a big loan in six months, but it is worried that the interest rates will go up by then. To lock in the current rates, the company can buy an interest rate futures contract, which is an agreement to borrow at today's rate in the future. If the rate goes up after six months, the derivative contract compensates for the increase, protecting the company from higher costs. So that's all for this video. I hope you now have a good understanding of how derivatives are classified based on their underlying assets. If you found any terms like hedging a bit challenging, don't worry, we will cover all those concepts in detail in the upcoming videos. Thank you and see you in the next one.